First one up, baby. We got NFL training camp starting this week, folks. Woo! It's starting to be back, baby. Obviously, next week is when the majority of um, the team start, the 28th, next Wednesday. But the Cowboys, Steelers, and Buccaneers all open training camps this week because of some certain circumstances, whether it's um, basically just them having the early preseason game the hall of fame game so let's uh see when these camps all start and when we can start really kind of breaking it down and seeing what these uh, teams are made of and what these players can actually do and are these teams actually set up for success um like they've all been saying after otas so let's see what we get here the Dallas Cowboys, Pittsburgh Steelers, and the, T and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers all open camps within the next seven days, folks. The Cowboys are the first to report on Wednesday, July 21st, baby. Wednesday, July 21st. So, potentially, the finals end on this Tuesday, and then we go right into football. I mean, did the stars align just on that? Jeez. Or we could have some overlap. I don't think game seven would be until, like, a Friday or a Saturday, and then we got football and basketball to talk about, so fantastic so the Cowboys are going to be the first ones to report on July 21st they have hard knocks going on uh, the Steelers are opening on Thursday July 22nd and the Bucks conduct their first practice on Saturday July 25th so three big teams to kind of look for uh, this season all getting a little early kind of a start at it because here we go the Cowboys and the Steelers are slated to play in the Hall of Fame game on Thursday August 5th so that's why they get kind of you know early access to the training camp because they have to play about a week earlier than all the other teams do for that preseason game. Uh, the Cowboys will be featured on Hard Knocks this season, so once again we can start kind of getting that film for that first episode. Can't wait for that. And the Super Bowl champion Bucks, who will reportedly visit the White House this week, open the season on Thursday, September 9th against the Cowboys. So once again, why the kind of Bucks get a little bit of a couple extra days is because they're going to be the first game, that Thursday night game. So the other 29 NFL clubs are scheduled to open their training camp on July 27th. Oh, I thought it was the 28th. Look at that. Even better. Next Tuesday, a day. Uh, we have an extra day. Or, no, we lost today. <laughs> but, hey, you know, we got uh, 29 teams on the 27th. That day is going to be absolutely filled with madness, folks. Cannot wait for it. So, uh, what I want to do is kind of just get all of our training camp narratives written down so we have them on the record. So we're going to start with the Cowboys, Steelers, and Bucks. Talk through what narratives we just want to see clear up before the regular season starts. Uh, before we start truly, fully buying into all these teams, we've been talking about these teams kind of just based on what we saw from last season and what we've seen in the offseason already. But now when we're getting new information out, these training camps, this is where the teams are make it or break it. This is it. Get your work in, get your training in, because after this kind of, you know, month of training camp, we're going right into the NFL season. No more time to kind of, you know, get ready. No more time to make adjustments. It's right now. Let's go for game number one, which starts on September 9th. So, uh, we will end up doing probably all 32 teams, but let's just start with these three since they all start this week, and we can kind of do the other ones a little bit later in the week and going into next week. So, the first or the three teams up that are starting this week in training camp are the Bucks, Cowboys, and the Steelers. So, let's start with the Bucks first, our 2021 NFL training camp narratives to watch for. What do we have to watch when it comes to the Bucks? Just really Tom Brady. <laughs> is Tom Brady good to go this season? He's coming off that injury last season. He's coming off of surgery in this postseason. Everybody's saying that, hey, he's going to look even better than he did last season. And last season was real solid for the man. Obviously, he won a Super Bowl. A little bit too many turnovers. Let's get up his official stats. What was Tom Brady looking like just statistically last year? He said, he, or well, he didn't say he had the torn MCL. That was kind of, you know, a narrative that we just kind of found out about a couple days ago when we talked about it on the show that, you know, everyone's saying that Tom Brady had a torn MCL the entire time throughout the entire season. Tom Brady never really said anything about that. He just said it was a knee injury. So we're not really sure how much of an extent that knee injury was truly affecting him last season, but we can expect him to be a little bit better because you have surgery. So. 
you would think he would feel a little bit better after that. But last season, Tom Brady, 65% completion percentage, 40. Oh, my goodness. The man threw 4,600 yards his first time on a new team, folks. Jeez Louise, that's absolutely perfection. 40 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. I mean, folks, this is this is what GOATs do, folks. This is where we judge all of our good quarterback stats on, folks. You look at any Aaron Rodgers season, you look at any Tom uh, Tom Brady season, you look at any Drew Brees season, that's where we get our data of what are great winning quarterbacks in this league. That's where we hold everybody up to. These three combined stats and what they do in a, in a year, we take all those stats and that's where we get our 62 to 65 completion percentage, 4,000 plus yards, and at least two to one touchdown and interception ratio. But really, you should be looking at three to one. You should be wanting to achieve three to one. And Tom Brady checking every single one of those boxes. So that's all we have to watch out for. We have to watch out for watching out of how Tom Brady is going to play, how great this man's going to play. And that's really it. We know they're returning all 22 starters. So that's really it. We got to watch Tom Brady. Got to keep an eye on how Tom Brady looks after the surgery. And I want to kind of see the defense be a little, a little, a little bit newer. Not just focusing on everything they were going to do that, that they were doing last season. You got to switch up your defense or teams that had the entire offseason to prep for you and watch the tape and see what you were doing. They're going to destroy you in the regular season. So this is what we got to watch for how Tom Brady looks after surgery and um, how do I want to say it? And um, kind of spicing up the offense and defense not being the same. So those are two kind of narratives to watch out for as training camp progresses, as we start kind of seeing, you know, um, uh, Preseason game one, preseason game two, preseason game three, leading up to that week one matchup on Thursday night football against the Cowboys should be real good. So how's Tom Brady looking and can they kind of spice up their offense and defense, not just kind of running the same thing that they ran last year? Obviously, there's not too much to watch out for on this Bucks team just because they won last year. They're already kind of, you know, great. They're bringing everybody back. Bruce Arians is still there. Tom Brady. Let's kind of see if Father Time catches up with Tom Brady as well. Kind of, you know, another kind of Tom Brady narrative. Is it going to be a sudden drop off or does this man never drop off? He's the outlier when we talk about father time in the NFL and longevity in the league and never being injured and never or never really kind of a letting an injury affect him being out there on the field or his level of play. So we'll see what Tom Brady does this year, folks, but I'm sure it's going to be absolutely magnificent. All righty, the Cowboys. Ooh, ooh, a lot to look out for, and I'm so glad they are on hard knocks. It's going to be fantastic. The first thing off the rip that we need to kind of watch for for this Cowboys team is what can Mike McCarthy do? We get a behind the si behind the scenes look at Mike McCarthy through hard knocks. Hopefully they don't cut out all the embarrassing things because I'm sure he is going to be in his office getting massages, folks. I'll never le let that down. I I kind of judge my overall critique of Mike McCarthy on him, on that kind of little nugget of information being true, that the Packers players were saying that this man was up in his office getting massages a lot of the time when the team was down on the field practicing. So we'll see what Mike McCarthy, can Mike McCarthy impress us? That's our first narrative. Mike McCarthy, big question marks. Can the man coach? Is this man a good coach, or does he just kind of get pulled along by great quarterbacks, a la Aaron Rodgers? Because last season, Mike McCarthy didn't have a good quarterback at the helm because Dak Prescott goes down and just the overall Cowboys flounder. Now, the offense was still decent. It was really the defense that was truly letting them down. But still, at the end of the day, you're the head coach. You have to take care of everything. It all falls on your shoulders offense and defense winning and losses it all falls on the head coach not getting the players right to play and that's kind of goes back to him getting the massages hey if that defense was being trash week in and week out what are you doing to fix it why are we not fixing this problem why are you not just trying to do everything in your power to kind of make switches make changes to have this defense look at least something like a decent defense in the league so Mike McCarthy is going to be a huge narrative to watch for 
for. The Also, the other one is Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator. Can this man coach defense? Because we've only seen him have two good defensive years. The, the Legion of Boom days when he was a defensive coordinator there, when he had an abundance of talent for that Seahawks defense, that's when he had a good season. And then the first year in Atlanta, his defense was real solid as well. But after that, just trash. So Dan Quinn has only been a good, good defensive coach when he's had a lot of talent or year one when nobody knew what, nobody was kind of knowing what they were truly doing on defense until the next season when they were able to watch that entire year's worth of tape and then they were able to figure it out and then Dan Quinn flounders for the rest of his career so this is it make it or break it this Cowboys team really doesn't have any great weapons and this is a year one for him being a defensive coordinator for this Cowboys team so they should be at least a little uh, at least a little decent but it's still can Dan Quinn coach as well so our first two narratives to watch for on this Cowboys team are their coaching staff. Can these people coach, folks? Or are they just getting dragged along by great talent? So that's something to watch for for the Cowboys. Another thing I want to watch for is can Zeke be a top five running back this year? He was absolutely awful last season. How could you not carry that team? Mike McCarthy and Zeke letting us down big, big, big time when you don't have your number one weapon on the field in your quarterback of Dak Prescott. So the running game didn't take advantage and say, hey, let me put the team on my back. Zeke Elliott, I mean, he gets talked about like a top five running back. He thinks of himself as a top one running back in this league. So the fact that he didn't go out and seize that opportunity, it left a little bit of a bad taste in her mouth. Anybody could be good when your team's loaded with talent. We want to see what you do when the talent's not all there. Or the talent's hurt and you have to step up. You want to be the leader. You got paid first. Dak didn't get paid. Dak only got paid because Jerry Jones kind of had to because he got injured and you would look like a little bit of a scumbag if you didn't pay him after he sacrificed his body to make your team profits, to make your business profits. So Jerry Jones did the right thing. We're not knocking Jerry Jones, but he it was kind of a little forced in it, uh, forced into doing it, where he where he paid Zeke before Dak. So he got the big bucks, and he still didn't step up. Can Zeke return to? Because I mean, he had a real great, I think, rookie season. I think he's kind of fallen off ever since then. But let's get up his uh, official stats here. Here we go. <clears throat> 979 yards last season, folks. His lowest ever. How is it it's your lowest rushing season ever when it should have been your highest production season ever? Because you've got Andy Dalton at the helm. The hell is going on with that? Is it the offensive play calling of Mike McCarthy or was it Zeke just not doing it? So once again, going back to is Mike McCarthy head coach? Because why were you not rushing the ball 400 times every single game? You should have been leaning on this man. But Mike McCarthy didn't do that. Or Zeke Elliott didn't do it in just the production. He only had 244 rushes. And that was his second lowest, 242. So he wasn't even getting his highest rushes. His highest rushing season was his rookie year at 322. Why didn't you run him for an extra 100 rushes? That falls a little bit on Mike McCarthy, the offensive play caller over there. Get it going. Get it together. So, Ezekiel Elliott, obviously his best season, his rookie season, 1,600 yards. Love seeing that. He had 300 yards receiving as well that season for a grand total. Did he break? Oh, just under 2,000 yards at 1,994. And that came his second best season in 2018 at 1,400 yards. And then he had 500 yards on top of that for a grand total of 2,000 yards. So that's what we're talking about. If we can get Ezekiel Elliott back to that 2018 season of just score, how many touchdowns did he have? He had nine touchdowns in total, rushing and passing. But that 2,000-yard mark, that's what we want to say. That's what we want to see. Can Ezekiel Elliott get back to the, that day, 2018, that year, even his rookie year, right at 1,994 yards? right under that 2,000 mark, that's where we want to see you, um, obviously over it. So can Ezekiel Elliott be a top five running back here? Really, I mean, with 2,000 yards in total, that's kind of a top three running back. So can Zeke get back to prime form? And 
And that's really it. That's the three big narratives that I'm going to be kind of watching out for because that's really going to tell us, is this Cowboys team ready to make the push of trying to fight for this division lead, this division win? Because we do know it's going to be a little, we think it's going to be a lot harder than the Cowboys think it is for them to win the NFC East because we absolutely love this uh, Giants team and we're big fans of what this Washington defense and coaching staff can do. The offensive side of the ball is a little iffy, um, you know, not the greatest wide receivers out there. Um, solid wide receivers. We'll call them solid. It's nothing to kind of get excited about. Um, you know, Terry McLaurin, real, real good. But that's really it. And then Ryan Fitzpatrick. We know we say it all the time. He's a, he's a 500 quarterback. That is it. You can't really expect to go more than 500 here this year. And when we're in a kind of a uh, no going 500 500 season because of 17 games is an odd number. You can't go eight and eight. You have to either go nine and eight or eight and nine. You're either going to have a winning season or a losing season, and that's where you know Fitzpatrick's going to come in. Is he going to be at you know 55 percent win percentage or is he going to be at like 45 percent win percentage? Is he either going to be those two? Can't really see this Washington team winning that many games under Ryan Fitzpatrick. So. We'll see what this Cowboys team can do, but we're fo focusing on Mike McCarthy. Can he coach? Dan Quinn, can he coach? And can Zeke get back to prime form? We're not worried about Dak. I'm truly not even worried about Dak. Dak's the least of my worries on this Cowboys team. It's everybody else but Dak. I believe in Dak. I think this man can get right back to form after that gruesome injury. It's still not phasing me for this Cowboys team overall. It's everybody else but Dak. I believe Dak, Dak can get it done. All right, now the last team that starts this week is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And y'all already know, baby. Y'all already know what we're going to be watching for. Najee Harris. That's it. I just want to watch Najee Harris. Honestly, I kind of wish the Steelers were on Hard Knocks just so I could watch Najee Harris. That is it. That's it. So that's our big narrative to watch for. Najee Harris, the real deal? We think he is. Is Najee Harris the real deal? Because we absolutely loved him out of college. We thought he was great rushing the ball. He's also very solid at catching the ball. He's not like a true dual threat running back as a Christian McCaffrey or an Alvin Kamara, but he's still real solid. He can get you two to 400 yards receiving while potentially, I believe, getting 14 to 16 yards rushing. So I believe Najee Harris could honestly be a 2,000 yard back next season. This season, year one, rookie year, I've got no problem with that. Another thing that kind of ties in with Najee Harris is the offensive line. Can that hold up? Because we've just kind of been, you know, talking about the last couple weeks on the show that the Steelers have like four new offensive linemen this season. So can they get kind of caught up to the system? Can they get caught up, you know, playing under Big Ben and, you know, Mike Tomlin and having an elite rusher behind them uh, to, you know, make it or break it? Because like we said, you know, Big Ben's arm could, could potentially not hold up this season, so they were really going to have to rely on the running game heavy throughout early on in the season. So Najee Harris, is he the real deal? That's our first narrative. And can the O-line hold? That's our second big narrative. Because you can't be a great running back without a great line. You could be a good running back without a great line, but you're not going to do what Derrick Henry does. You're not going to get 2,000 yards rushing. You might be able to get 2,000 yards rushing and receiving, but it's not going to be 2,000 pure rushing yards if you don't have a good line. And like we said, with these four new offensive linemen for the Steelers, that could potentially hurt Najee Harris's rookie year. We hope it doesn't because we think Najee Harris could be right underneath Derrick Henry for the best rushing, for the best running backs in the NFL right now. Um, and then the other narrative that we have to, uh, have to watch out for is Big Ben looking solid because we looked at his stats the other day, folks. Very not good. Let me type this out. Is, ben, is Big Ben looking like prime Ben? Because we saw him only throw for, what was it, 34 or 3,600 yards? The hell is that? The hell is 34, 3,600 yards, folks? It's absolutely trash. 3,800. A little better, but still worse. We need 4,000. I want to see 4,000 yards out of you if you declare yourself, if you are talked about as a highly regarded quarterback in this league. I must see 4,000 yards, and Big Ben only put up 3,800. 
That's it. I got to see 4,000. Touchdown interceptions was solid. 33 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. That's 3-1. to one. We absolutely love that. Completion percentage was on par, 65%. That's what we love. We just need to see the yards through the air there, and we saw that decline as the season progressed. Let's watch or let's take a look at these game logs here in 2020 just to kind of see when his bad games were kind of looking like. Were they truly at the end of the season? Let's take a quick look. Here we go. All righty. Here we go. First eight games of the season, 229 yards, 311 yards, 237, 239. He had a 162, 268, 182. That was the first eight games of the season, folks. 306. And then the back eight. They weren't they honestly weren't even that bad. Here we go. Oh, wow. These are actually better than I thought they were going to be. Here we go. Week nine. Game nine. Week 10. 333 yards, 267 yards, 266, 305, 187, 170, 341. So he had 200-yard gains, games, but he also had two 100-yard games in the first half of the season as well. So let's just see if Big Ben can be consistent throughout the entire season and not dropping a little, you know, under 200-yard games here and there. Interceptions really kind of ticked up at the back half of the season. Once again, not putting the ball in the right spots. The arm kind of floundering a little bit. He was still getting the yards, which is great. But these interceptions, folks, the last eight games, we got a one game, one, one, one interception game, one interception game, one interception game, two interception game, and a one interception game. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six out of the ten coming in the final one, two, three, four, five, six games of the regular season. So we got to see Big Ben just being a, a really a turnover-free passing machine in, in, the, in this year. So, can Big Ben get to prime Big Ben? No more 3,000-yard seasons. Let's get up to a 4,000. He's thrown for 5,000 yards before in his career. Make sure that's right. Yes, he's got 5,100 in 2018. So, I want to see that. That's the Big Ben I want to see because it's the last season. Go out on top like Peyton Manning. We'll see if Big Ben can do it. So, that's kind of our three big narratives to watch out for the Steelers. Is Najee Harris as good as we think he is? Because we, we're highly regarding this man super highly, folks. Very, very highly. We're big on this man. We're big, big, big on this man. So, is Najee Harris the real deal? Can the old line hold? Four new offensive linemen out there. And can Big Ben look like prime Big Ben not falling off, not the arm slowing down, not throwing picks at the end of the season, getting it done consistently throughout and into the playoffs and into the Super Bowl and at the Super Bowl and going on a top, riding out into the sunset like Peyton Manning did. Um, Alrighty, that's really it, folks. That's our narratives to watch for for the Bucks, Cowboys, and the Steelers. Coaches... Running backs, quarterbacks, let's see what they can do for these three teams starting training camp this week.